So this week, that was a long, long, long week, but it was an amazing week, and it was, <laughs> it was, it was fun. Uh, I want to give a shout out to my wife who put a lot of this together, all of our volunteers. You guys did an amazing job. Thank you so much. There was so much work that went into this and so much planning and so much time and, and we had so many volunteers here throughout the week and spent like, we think upwards of 90 hours this week um, here setting up and, and getting ready and, and implementing this. So it was been, it's been a really good time. We've been blessed and the kids were blessed as well. And so thank you guys for letting us do this. Thank you guys for the, the support and all of your contributions for donating to this event because you made it happen. So I wanna give you a round of applause as well. You guys have done so amazing and have blessed us immensely. Last week I got to preach on, on the goodness of the Holy Spirit, the, the fruit of the Spirit. Um, and so when I was reading through the curriculum for this week and re read that God is good is the, the main point of every day. I was like, great, I get to preach another goodness sermon. So you guys get to hear more goodness, which is good because the world tells us a lot of bad things and we need to be filled up with good things, right? So one thing that we learned, I'm gonna kind of go through all the Bible buddies if you'll bear with me and then I'll kind of try to wrap it all up in a message that will hopefully inspire you and, and touch your heart so that transformation can continue to happen as we've been working through the, the fruit of the Spirit. But the first day we met Mac, and Mac taught us um, that when life is unfair, God is good. And so we're, we're talking about all of the things in life, like, like when, when, when you deserve something and somebody else gets it, you've worked so hard for something, and, and, and whether it's a job, you've, you've been working your whole life for this, this promotion, and somebody who has been working for a couple of years, comes in and just takes it away. That's unfair, but, but we have to look for the good in that. We have to see that, that God is, is still in control. God is still good. God is still watching out for us. And um, all of this, this week, we've been asking our kids about God sightings. And in their crews, they're supposed to be sharing God sightings, which is uh, another way of saying, where do you see God working? Where do you see God moving in your life? And that can be in the sand that we, the, the, the bricks that we made with the sand. You can see God there because it, it still happened. It was harder, but it was still there. Um, or you could see God in the waterfall because God created all of this water, this life-sustaining substance that everybody needs. God is there. God, God created that. And we can see in the, the, the animals, the diversity of the animals that we have on stage, they're they're all created differently and they all have a purpose and they're all good. And so just because Mac has a, a horn for his defense and Savannah has a long neck and she's, she's more susceptible to a, a, an attack, it doesn't mean that that's, I mean, it's unfair that she doesn't have another horn to d defend herself, but it's still good because they're, they're unique in their, their creation, right? And so... We've gotta know that through every circumstance, God is good. And that's something that we tried to ingrain in our, our kids' minds this week is that in every situation, God is good. There was a time in my life where I felt so far from God. I, I felt like God was not listening to me. I felt like God was so, so far away and that everything I said just fell on deaf ears. And I wasn't realizing that God was trying to pr protect me from my own will, if you will. Um, I wanted to do one thing, I wanted to do something my way, and looking back on it now, I can see that it would have gone terribly wrong, and I definitely wouldn't be here today. I wouldn't be in this spot, I wouldn't be able to be with you and know all of you in our relationships. And that's a good thing, that's a good thing that I'm here, it's a good thing that God stepped in and said no, because otherwise I'd be somewhere else. Um, I shared with our kids that, that some of the things that I fear are spiders, I absolutely hate spiders, they're the worst, and I will always, I, but I, I, I don't wanna kill them. I don't like killing things, that's not something I also fear. But, so I'll trap them with a cup, but then I get stuck there. Like if it's on the ceiling and I trap it with a cup, I'm like, well, I can't move now, because it's gonna fall on me. I, I don't know what to do. Um, I, I, I fear spiders. I, I used to fear the dark, and there's still a little bit of like eeriness about the dark, 
but I shared with our kids that I, I fear failure. Failure is probably the, one of the most difficult things for me to face, and it's something that I fear the most. Failure is, is almost crippling to me, and, and I try everything that I can to succeed at everything that I can, and I have high expectations for myself, so that makes it even more difficult because when I do something, I want to do it with excellence, and I want to do it so that God is glorified, and because I believe that, that as Christians, we serve a God who is higher than any other we serve a God, and if we seek to glorify God, we should do our very best at everything that we do, whether that is music, whether that is a VBS program, whether that's speaking, whether that is driving a car, whether that's having a conversation with somebody. Do your best in every situation to glorify God because you serve him, not yourself. And God is good. God is good all the time. And so when I face failure, I... I tense up, I, I, I stop speaking, I, I lose my train of thought because it's like a, a, a brick wall right in front of me. I'm, I'm faced with failure, what do I do? But I have to trust that God will get me through this. There's, there's either the way around it, around the wall, or there was the way through it. And if I go around it, I've learned that if I go around it, it takes a really long time and I often lose my train of thought and then I end up not doing it. But if I go through it, I, need, I know I need to go through it with God. I need God there because there's no way I'm gonna break through a brick wall by myself. And so I've, I'm faced with this, this fear, but I know that God is good through it. And so when you trust God and trust that, that he's with you, that he's gonna provide for you and every need that you, you require, there's, there's a difference between needs. We talked about this last week. The, the things that we want and the things that we think we, we need versus the one thing that we do need, which is Jesus. We think we need all this money. We think we need all this, this time. We think we need all these resources uh, to survive. But, but Jesus says, you need me. You need, I am the bread of life. I am living water. I can give you eternal life. You need to come to me so that you can live and that you can be sustained. But, but we think that because it's, it's substantive, we can hold it, it's tangible, that's more re attractive to us. But, but that's not good, it's gonna fall away, it's gonna disappear, it's, 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 it's not eternal. Jesus is eternal, Jesus is what we can hold on to. And Jesus is good. And so, talking about fear, fear is something that none of us like, but we all need to trust that God is good in the fearful times, right? And then Marge. Marge is a, a Cape buffalo, and her horns go up and down, which emphasizes, and, and, and uh, there's a word for it, but I don't know what it is. Um, it means life goes up and down, life changes. So she taught us when, when life changes, God is good. There's a time, I'm gonna, this is more of a testimony message than anything, and I'm hoping that it will give you inspiration for your own life to think about the times when life was unfair or, or scary or changing in your own life to where you can see God moving and you can actively uh, think about the, the God sightings in your life throughout your life. And so this is what I'm hoping through my, my stories this morning. But there's a time in my life about, uh, about six years ago, six and a half years ago now, um, I was on my way to an interview with a fire department. I wanted to be a firefighter and that's what I had trained four years um, to do and I was good at it and I knew my stuff and, and I had a feeling that this is what I was gonna do for the rest of my life. Uh, but as I shared with you earlier, I thought I was doing things because, or I was doing things because I thought that was the way it was supposed to be but I wasn't seeking God, I was seeking my own, my own thing. Um, and God had a different plan. So God said, no, on my way to the interview, I'm in a car driving to the interview and God says, no. And at that moment, my life changed. I needed to either say, God, I'm gonna follow you or I'm gonna do my own thing. If I'm gonna follow you, my whole life is gonna change. Everything that I've known, everything that I've worked for, I'm gonna have to start all over, but I'm gonna commit to you. And so that's what I did. I went to the interview still, I went through it, and um, the interview went well, and, but at the last question I got stumped and I knew that was God closing the door and I knew that was me having to accept the fact that God had a greater plan for me and I needed to trust him and trust his goodness. And so 
when, when we went through the day of uh, when, when life changes, God is good, that was what was on my mind the whole time because God is so good in the change. God is so good in the things that we need to step out in faith and trust him because at that moment in my life, I had no idea what I was gonna do. I had no idea what God was calling me to do. I just knew I needed to trust him and I needed to follow him with everything that I had. And now I'm here. I, I went to school. I went to study Christian ministries and worship leadership and I was able to speak um, and I get, kept taking uh, advantage of these opportunities that God gave me because I wanted to change, I wanted to transform, and I wanted to seek God in everything that I did. And so when life changes, God is good. And then yesterday, we met Zion. He's our lion friend, and he taught us that when life is sad, God is good. Sadness is something that a lot of us, myself included, um, tend to shy away from. We don't like to show our, our sadness. We don't like to show our emotion. Um, our culture tells us to be stoic and if anything, to be angry, if you're gonna show emotion, um, to be strong about it. And so when we show sadness and when we are sad, um, we need to realize that that's not a sign of weakness. That's not a sign of, of um, being small, but that's a sign of being human. That's That's what... God put within us a sense of, of mourning, a, an opportunity to mourn for when we lose loved ones, an opportunity to feel sad when we're hurt, an opportunity to, to reconcile relationships when we feel like something is broken. And so there's part of life, oftentimes it's, it's when somebody that you're very close to uh, either hurts you or is lost um, where, where you, you no longer have access to them. That's where a lot of the source of our sadness comes from. But when we see that sadness from God's point of view, sadness from God's point of view is when we turn away from him. When we say, we're not gonna follow you, God. That breaks God's heart. When we see our loved ones turn away from God, that breaks our heart. But we need to trust that God is good. Last week I shared that sometimes um, it's, it's not the, the thing that's said. I, I kind of shared with you my, my story about my parents when they would say, Jesus loves you. Jesus died for you, for your sins so that you could be forgiven. And I heard that all my life growing up, but it wasn't until I was about 18 or 19 when I heard my youth pastor say it and it like hit me in the heart. Sometimes we can be sad for the person and the situation, but we need to still pray for the person and God's goodness who will speak life and light into their lives. And so always be praying, always trust that when life is sad, God is good because God can bring beauty from ashes and God can bring life from death. And we trust that and we believe that, amen? And then today we got to Savannah and Savannah wraps it all up in a great way. And she says, when life is good, God is good. And that's an amazing thing to celebrate because there are so many good things happening, not only in our church, not only in our lives, but there are things happening all around the world that are not being celebrated and we need to celebrate them more. We need to focus on the good things that are happening in our lives, in our world, rather than the things that are tearing us apart and dividing us. And so my hope is that this week um, you can be focused on the good things. You can be reminded that when life is sad or scary or unfair or, or when life changes, that God is good. And then in the good times, you can say, God is good all the time. And this is my testimony. I am going to share about the things that Jesus has done in my life. I'm gonna share about the things that he has brought me through. I'm gonna share about the things that he has redeemed me from and, and reconciled me with. And I'm going to share the good news of Jesus to my friends and my family, my coworkers, because that is the good news that needs to be spread throughout the world. That's the good news that people need to hear. The world hears enough bad stuff. The world hears enough uh, tearing apart and saying, don't trust this person, they lied about this one thing one time, or don't trust this person, they wore the wrong outfit to church because I'm sure this is probably the first time that anybody's preached in an orange volunteer shirt and shorts and Nikes probably at this church. I almost wore a hat, but I didn't. Um, but I did the rest of the week, so I was up here. But I figured the hat kind of covered my face, and you probably want to see that a little bit. 
Yeah, yeah. So, but when life changes, there's, there's new things. There's good things that come from change. There's good things that come from, from sorrow. There's good things that come uh, from fear, from facing your fear and trusting God. And I hope that today this can be a good message for you, that you can be inspired. Um, there's a lot of work that went into this week. There's a lot of, of prayer that went into this week. And at times, there were times where we wanted to give up. We, we were faced with that, um, that fear of it's not gonna work. The devil was, was trying to put into our minds that, that this isn't gonna work, it's, it's gonna fail, you're not gonna have kids there, you're not gonna have volunteers there, you're not gonna have enough resources, you're not gonna, it's not going to be enough. It's not going to be good, so you might as well quit. You might as well give up. And that's what the devil's gonna say every single time when something amazing is about to happen because he's gonna try to prevent it as best as he can because he knows that the gospel of Jesus will be proclaimed and it will change lives and it will transform lives. And because we had 18 kids here, we had an opportunity to minister to 18 kids and to, to love on them. We had almost two volunteers. We did have two volunteers for every kid that was here. And so they got so much one-on-one -on -one time with our, with our adults, telling them about the good news of Jesus, telling them about the Bible stories, walking through the Red Sea and, and escaping Egypt and, and seeing Pharaoh and going through the plagues with, with each other. And they were, they were actively experiencing all of these Bible stories. And, and Lindy and I were talking just last night, like we wish that this could be every single week, that our Bible stories with our kids could be this interactive experience with them. That's our dream, and maybe we'll get there one day. But right now we have to trust that God is good in every situation. God was good this week, and he helped us get through it. And we're still here, and we're tired. All of our volunteers are very tired. They've been here every day for five days. Some of us, some of them have been here. I know Aaron was here, what, like for the last 10 days in a row, maybe 10, 12 days in a row. He's here like, 15 minutes before I get here. And he's, he rides his bike. He doesn't even have a car. He just rides his bike from home and he's here. He's like, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to set up. I'm ready to tear these leaves up and make them look like a tree. Like we spent hours doing that. But it's because our volunteers said, yes, I'm committed. I know that this is going to be a good thing and I believe in the message that this this curriculum and this, this program will teach our kids. And I believe that it's something we need to hear. Last week's message was just be good. This week's message is God is good because God dwells within us and God dwells around us. I wanted to talk more about the goodness within us last week, but I want to experience the goodness around us now. And so we've got about five minutes left and this is gonna be something that I wasn't really planning on, but I feel like it's a good thing to do is just the people around you, I think it would be an amazing thing to share about what God is doing in, in your life um, with each other, just the power of testimony, the power of God's love, and to share with each other the good things in your life that are happening before we close out this, this morning um, and before we head over to the, the fellowship hall to eat. But I wanna spend the next like three, four minutes um, just sharing with each other in your groups, find five or six or seven people around you and just share what God is doing in your life. So do that. I think that'd be great. Share it out loud. Make this place really loud. <laughs>
There's an old saying, God is good all the time. Okay, is God good when, 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 things, when things get uh, messed up? It, it, when things get, get messed up, okay, when, when, when things get scary, when, when, when things are good, when things get hungry, no, 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 everybody goes to the fellowship hall, have a great time. Hey everybody, thank you so much for joining us at Long Beach Nazarene. If you enjoyed the message today, please share it with a friend. We know that the gospel has to get out there to everybody. Our call is to spread the good news of Jesus Christ. If you want to partner with us, check us out at lbfnaz.org. And there's a Give Online button in there as well. Don't forget to click subscribe. We'll see you later. God bless.